about the same volume as this one. Else there. Why don't we all stand up to our feet this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Your love makes me sing. Your love is a pride. I can feel it rising. All the joy that's thrown free. Inside of me, every time I see you, all the good is kind to me. I can feel the sky's gone, rising up in the rain. Hallelujah! 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 Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah! 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 Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, 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 your love makes me sing. Good morning. Amen. Why don't you all keep standing? Yours truly was in charge of the order of service this morning. And so I thought to myself, it's a youth-led worship service. Why don't we amp it up and add a second song at the beginning? So as I'm known for, that's what we're doing this morning. so amazing Lord we've come to give you thanks for all you've done because of your love we're forgiven because of your love our hearts are clean we lift you up songs of freedom forever will change because of your
Wanting gratitude and praises For compassion so amazing Lord, we come to give you thanks For all you've done Because of your love We're forgiven Because of your love hearts are clean. We lift you up with songs of freedom. Forever we're changed because of your Because of your love, we're forgiven. Sing it with us, because. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up with songs of freedom. Forever we're changed because of your love. If you weren't awake before, you are now. You may be seated. <laughs> Welcome to First Christian Church <laughs> in Concord. This is our youth-led worship service. We're one church that gathers in person, and on Zoom, and on Facebook Live. We believe that everyone is an equal child of the divine who deserves kindness, friendship, and dignity. We express our love through sharing and helping others. We are individuals who are open and affirming of everyone. We strive to be an anti-racist congregation. We come with open minds, willing hands, and committed hearts. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. Um, please join me in the call to worship. God is leading us out of our wilderness. God, God will provide, provide a safe, safe haven, haven for, for us. Place your trust in God's loving kindness. God, God has, has heard, heard our cries and offers us hope. Thanks be to God who brings us light to life. Thanks be to, to God, God who nurtures, who nurtures and, sustains. and sustains us. Amen. Amen. God of gentle, loving guidance, who brought us your people into a new land, filled with new hope and promise. Be with us today, opening our hearts and spirits to an awareness of your abiding love and presence with us. Help us to place our trust solely in you, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For thousands of years, candles have been lit to provide illumination, warmth, comfort, and to engage the senses. At our church, we light candles during this special portion of our service, representing our individual prayers joined together in common petition to God. For those at home, we invite you to grab a candle and light it with us. For those in the sanctuary, we invite you and your family to come up as the next song plays and light a candle symbolizing the prayer and voice inside your heart. In this sacred moment, we open our hearts to what God has for our lives, our homes, and our church body. Please join me in lighting a candle.
And now's the part of our service where we share um, times during the week where we saw God, where we got energized by something that happened. Um, and I'll kick it off. Um, last weekend, I wasn't here because I was in Sacramento at uh, First Christian Church Sacramento at a lock-in. And if you don't know what that is, you get a bunch of teenagers in a church and you lock the doors and they're not allowed out till the next day. It's a captive audience. But the real problem is for me was there should be an expiration date for sleeping on a floor. And I passed that expiration date, but I couldn't complain because the lady next to me not sleeping was the same age. So, but at the end of the weekend, and we also ran the youth led service at that church last Sunday. So I'm doing a repeat this week, got a little practice, but at the end of the week, the weekend, I was really tired, but my heart was full because it always does my heart good to see other youth other young people. We had three from our church, the Tang boys represented Concord. And it's it's great to see a bunch of kids get together and have a good time and, you know, maybe learn a little bit about God and just enjoy one another's company, even if we didn't get any sleep. So is there anybody else that wants to share online or in the, in the sanctuary? Bill. Thank you. I just want to invite everyone here and those that are online uh, to uh, share cake and 
punch with us next Sunday in celebration of the 248th birthday of the Marine Corps. No, I was not there on the day it was born, <laughs> uh, contrary to popular belief. Uh, and uh, Veterans Day, which are this coming Friday and uh, Saturday, they're important days in my life, and I hope they'll be days I can share with you. Thank you. Come on up, Michelle. Hello. I got a sound need for you guys. My buddy Susan, her, her brother, is in the hospital. So I pray for him a lot. Uh, so we were, I was also, I don't know where to stand when I'm in the middle of here. This is weird. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, anyway, we uh, also at the lock-in. And so Sacramento uh, has a young woman. I don't know her name, the one that plays the piano. I don't remember her name. I can't remember her name, so I apologize. But she can play the organ. And she played Phantom of the Opera. During it was service. so cool. Like during the service, on the organ. <laughs> It was really good, cool. and and she recorded it the night before. So when the kids were playing uh, sardines, which if you've never played, is another special, special thing, only for young people. Um, basically, you the it's, it's like a reverse hide and seek because one person hides and then everybody else has to find them. But when they find them, they have to hide as well. Hence the sardines name. Because if the first person chooses the small hiding place, then y'all have to try to cram in there. What was that? Yes. And, and it's supposed to be quiet. But, of course, you get a bunch of teenagers together. It's not quiet. But she had record, uh, someone had recorded her playing the Phantom of the Opera. And one of the other youth sponsors played it while they were playing sardines. Just to add another level of <laughs> fun, spooky. Anybody else have anything they want to share here? Well, it's for the people at home. <laughs> uh, a month before leaving prison, my doctor told me I had a PSA score of 40. That is extremely high. She told me tactlessly, you have prostate cancer. Those days, I was so happy to finally get a release date. And after that sickening news, my light began to flicker. Well, Friday, I went to John Muir to see a urologist. He said my blood test showed 2.9 on my PSA score. Well, within normal, I don't have prostate cancer. Amen. If any one of you ever wanted to see a miracle to help increase your faith, well, you're hearing and seeing one. I see the love of God clearly, daily, and endlessly. All praise to Jesus, the lover of my soul. Where have I seen love this week? I see his love and mercy washing over all our sin. I see a near revival stirring as we pray and seek on our knees. Mm. I see a generation rising up to take their place. I see us being everything we were created to be, living and doing his will for his kingdom's cause. And in all of this, I see his unbounding love all around. I see his love raining down upon us and see him teaching us to love like he has loved us. Amen. 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 Is there anybody online, Chris? Uh, not that I see right now. Uh, no, I don't see any. Thank you.
November 1st is All Saints Day. And so it is the tradition in our church and many other churches to remember those who have passed away, those who have gone before us, our ancestors in the faith, as well as our own ancestors, um, our loved ones, our family members, our friends. And so we do that on the first Sunday of November every year. Will you join me in the litany of the saints? Gracious God, you are to be praised for the women and men whose faithful witness to your love inspires the generations of your people. Abraham and Sarah, who believed your promise, even though they were old and barren. <laughs> Isaiah of Jerusalem, who in a time marked by terror, proclaimed that the lion would lie down with the lamb. Mary Magdalene, who ran from the tomb, crying out that Jesus was alive. Moses of Sartarsus, who was beaten and shipwrecked while carrying the gospel to us, the Gentiles. Augustine, who, when the cities of the world would fail him, saw the city of God. Martin Luther, who spoke afresh of salvation by grace alone through faith. Sojourner Truth, who dreamed of women and men, black and white, all of them free. Thomas Campbell, Martin Stone, and Alexander Campbell, who yearned for a church with the vitality of the New Testament church. Other disciples of our own time who prayed and worked for the life of the world to be shaped by the power of the Spirit. Martin Luther King Jr., who prophesied of the day when we will all be judged by the content of the character and not by the color of skin. Mother Teresa, who made her bed among the homeless, fed the hungry, and clothed the naked. And we remember the saints from our own lives who have made their home in heaven this year. Hope Attenhofer. Wendy Collins. Justin Cox, Don DeWeese, Ada Gabe, Kelly Green Cation, Lane Johnson, Nancy Lively, Malik Sheen, Catherine Smith, Jesse, Dale Giddy. I invite you to name others that you would like us to remember. <laughs> Amen. Please reflect with me during this time of prayer as we lift up our needs before God. Jesus, we ask that you would walk with us as we go along this journey. We want to be by your side, and even as we want to walk with you. Sometimes we are not comfortable with the path that is set before us. We want a smooth, newly paved road with clear markings and bright, bold signs 
telling us what to do and warning us of what lies ahead. But the journey of discipleship is like a rough mountain path. There are rocks, ruts, dust, dirt, and holes. There may be wolves or robbers at any turn. Do we dare risk discipleship if it means struggle? You have called us to rely on your guidance and direction. You remind us that God has never failed us. We have been brought to new opportunities of service that we never would have encountered on the safe road. And this is because in all our trials, you do walk with us, Lord Jesus. Friends, God calls on us to lean into discomfort. In this portion, I invite you to speak aloud your prayers and concerns in the silence, knowing that God wants to meet us at the point of our need. Waves of peace will come over you as you take that step of faith by speaking aloud the prayer in your heart. I invite you to do so at this time. In our troubles and trials, Lord, remind us that we have your strength on which to rely. As we have faithfully brought before you the names of loved ones in need of your healing and comfort, remind us that we too are recipients of that same healing love. Strengthen us, walk with us, Lord. Lift us high and give us confident strides as we follow your will and your path. As we have lifted up our prayers to God, let us join in unison as we pray what Jesus taught us when he prayed, our creator who is in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever. Amen. Now is the time that we bring our tithes and our offerings before God. We want to thank you in your faithfulness in giving so that together as one body, we can carry out the work of the Lord. We invite you to give during this time.
Please pray with me. God is with us each day, each day offering so many blessings. Now we bring these gifts in an attitude of praise and thanksgiving. God, bless these gifts and the life that these gifts represent. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Son, those God redeemed from trouble. And gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted with them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and God delivered them from their distress. God led them by a steady way until they reached an inhabited town. God turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the wickedness of its inhabitants. God turns a desert into pools of water, a parched land into springs of water. And there God lets the hungry live, and they establish a town to live in. They sow fields and plant vineyards and get a fruitful yield. So we begin our conversation today with two poems. The first I will read is written by Rabbi Tamara Cohen, entitled No Pain Like Our Pain. Rabbi Tamara Cohen is the Vice President and Chief of the Program Strategy at Moving Traditions. More of her liturgical poetry can be found in Siddhar Lev Shalom and on ritualwell.org. In this prayer, prayer, she speaks of God as the divine, exiled, and crying one. Images that come from Rabbinic tradition about the Shanik. Shekinah. Shekinah. Before I re read, reflect on the scripture, Laminations one twelve. The writer is speaking to God. Look carefully and see if there's possibly there could possibly be pain like my pain, like the one bestowed by you upon me. The poem reads Dear God, look at, help us look. Look closer so we may see our children and their children. Their children are our own. Help us look so we may see you in bleary, bleary eyes of each orphan, giving each grieving childless mother, each mass camouflaged fighter for his people's dignity. Please God, dear God, divine, exiled, and crying one, loosen our claim to our own uniqueness. Soften this hold on our exclusive right to pain, to compassion, to justice. May your children, all of us, unique and in your image, come to know the quiet truth of shared pain, shared hope, shared land, shared humanity, shared risk, shared courage, shared peace. May, may it be your will and may it be ours. The next poem is entitled Kindness by Naomi Shehab Nye. Naomi was born in St. Louis, Missouri. Her father was a Palestinian refugee and her mother was an American of German and Swiss descent. She spent her teen years in Jerusalem and San Antonio. She received many honors and awards for her work, including the Ivan Sandroff Award 
for Lifetime Achievement and the Robert Creeley Prize, among others. The poem reads, before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. Feel the future dissolved in a moment, like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved. All this must go so you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride, thinking the bus will never stop. The passengers eating maize and chicken will stare out the window forever. Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the Indian and a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you. How he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must speak to it till your voice catches the thread of all sor sorrows and you see the size of the clock. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to gaze at bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for and then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. Reflect on these questions after hearing these words. What words, images, or ideas stood out to you as you listened? How do they make you feel about current events? Did they remind you of anything in your own life? What meanings did you take away? How do we show kindness in a world full of pain and polarization? And is kindness enough? Imagine that in this room, the aisle down the middle here was littered with obstacles that prevented each side from speaking or visiting the other. Perhaps a deep river, uneven stones, or even a wall and barbed wire fencing. Not only would this be an odd sight to see in a church, but imagine what the, that separation would make us feel about one another or even ourselves. We might ask, why was I placed on this side? Or we might ask, I wonder what's going on, on over on the other side. We might feel isolated, stranded, or abandoned. In, this, in the scripture reading this morning, the psalmist urges the redeemed to recall their own memories of being trapped within the enemy's grasp. And as the people wandered in the desert, separated from their promise and suffering from hunger and thirst, something miraculous occurred. When the people cried out to the Lord, God delivered them from their distress and led them to a place of settlement. But not just living, God's deliverance for them meant they could thrive. Sometimes our deliverance comes in the form of helping one another out. Think about the aisle in this room again and the separation that obstacles would create. Can you imagine the feeling working together to connect with the people on the other side regardless of, dif of the difficulty? Can you imagine how great it would feel to finally be reunited with the folks across the aisle? The scripture invites us to give thanks to the Lord for God is good. But what does God, God's goodness consist of? Is it ethnics? Is it beauty? Is it usefulness? Is it justice? God is good in all of those ways. But the dimension of God's goodness that always moves God's people to the highest praise and deepest thanks is God's love that endures forever. No matter what happens to us, no matter what we do, no matter how dire our situation or deep our sin, God's love endures forever. God will not break covenant with us. If you have ever felt in your life that you have, have been in a dry and weary land, this hope is for you. If you have ever, ever either physically or spiritually felt like you were wrestling with hunger and thirst, this hope is for you. 
in the quietness of your thoughts, if you have wrestled with isolation and despair, then this, is, then this hope is for you. If you cry out to the Lord in your trouble, God will deliver you from distress. And that is the hope of faith, the call to action. And it's not always easy or obvious. It takes faith. It takes believing that not only does God care for our needs, but that God is ready to miraculously demonstrate love for us and get us through our needs. Remember that intervention, interruption, and incarnation are the center of our faith. Our faith declares that Jesus the Christ came to earth to demonstrate love and faithfulness. But one thing is required of us to receive the blessing. Whether you consider yourself a Christian or not, God's invitation for us is to cry out or to ask for help. To believe in, by faith that our shortcomings and weaknesses are opportunities for God's glory and love to be revealed. That is the journey of faith. That is the hope in the desert. Please join me in this prayer of confession. Patient God, sometimes we just don't understand. We don't get it. We want instant gratification for all our needs. We don't want to have to follow direction or instructions. We are impatient. We want you to come down from heaven and solve our problems right now. We don't want to have to think about the problems and we are hesitant to create solutions. When we try to wiggle out of difficult situations, we get even further bound up in our own problems. You ask us to trust you. You invite us to lean on your strong arms of comfort and support. You set us on our feet and give us gifts and talents to use for healing and hope. All these wonderful things you do for us and we still whine and complain. Please forgive us, Lord. We are stubborn people as Jesus remind reminded the disciples to trust in God's commandments and guidance. So we are called to a place, so we are called to place our trust and confidence in your presence. Heal our wounds, calm our spirits and souls. Challenge and encourage our service to humankind. And when we laugh and when at last we enter the land of promise, help us to truly give thanks and rejoice and praise you. Amen. Can we sing this song together? It's uh, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus as we reflect upon uh, the words that were shared with us, the poems that were read, the scripture, all the songs that we've sang together this morning. Uh, I'm reminded of the fact that it is all about Jesus in our lives. Jesus is that change. Uh, Jesus is that hope in the desert. And so if you're here this morning, and maybe you feel like you're in the desert, maybe you are in the desert, right? Uh, there, There is... A divine miracle in store for you at the point of your need. So please join me as we sing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Sing it again. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen.
Testing. All right, it's on. Okay. Communion is a tradition that Christians have practiced for 2,000 years. It is a symbol of a couple of things. First, it is a symbol of Jesus who sacrificed his own life so that we may know God's love. Second, it is the symbol of the purpose of the church, to gather together in celebration and welcome everyone to the table. We read these words to remind us of the story of the communion. On the night that Christ was betrayed, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples. After supper, Christ took the bread, blessed it, broke, and offered it to the disciples, saying, This, this is the cup of the ongoing covenant, a sign and symbol of God's grace poured out for you and all its people. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. As our deacons serve you, you are welcome to come and partake as the next song plays.
I uh, my job uh, with the um, uh, youth service today that was very good. Chris, um, Chris, I'm so sorry. Uh, not just yet, but we'll get to you in just one second. I uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, is it Chris? Oh. <laughs> oh. Just kidding, Chris. Sorry, Chris. It's your it's your call. That's that's quite all right. I'm used to that. Um now uh, we invite you to stay connected uh wherever you can. Uh you can sign up for intersections and you can follow and interact with us on social media. Um you can uh, sign up for a weekly newsletter if um by contacting Andy Lyman at her email, andyfcc at concordfcc.net, and follow and interact with us on Facebook and YouTube. Our website is listed down below at concordfcc.net. And uh, we have some announcements. Today at 1 p.m., there's going to be a white pony service event in Pleasant Hill. Um, on Tuesday, November 7th, at 9.30, there's going to be a walking group. Um, and everybody is going to meet up at the church for that, excuse me. At the next Sunday, at 12 um uh, after these after church services there's gonna be an outdoor meeting on Zoom at noon and after the closing sound if you want please stay for the virtual coffee hour. Now, dear friends, go from this place in confidence that the God of creation is with you. Go boldly into the world, offering peace, hope, and healing love in the name of Jesus Christ. And may the God of love, hope, and peace be with you always. Amen. Amen.